Librarians at a Minnesota school are calling Google racist. One professor at an Arizona university is calling the traditional grading system racist as well. And a school in North Dakota is considering a sweeping gender inclusion policy that would house students based on gender identity. We'll have those details on that story and more. I'm Ophelia Jacobson, and this is the Campus Countdown. For our number three story of the week, two librarians at the University of Minnesota published a research guide claiming, among other things, that statistics and search algorithms like Google's are racist. The guide was developed in response to librarians fielding multiple requests from UMN researchers looking to incorporate anti-racism into their research practices, according to the university website. The digital resource also mentions critical race theory, which it characterizes as a positive force. The guide, quote, conducting research through an anti-racism lens is formatted to provide researchers with purportedly racist research practices with tips on how to mitigate the harm caused by said practices. Accordingly, the first section concerns how researchers can decenter whiteness in primary research. Another section dubbed, quote, acknowledge that data is not objective, criticizes modern statistics for being racist. The guide supports this assertion by claiming that formative figures in the discipline held racist views. So the library is essentially claiming that statistics are not objective, that they're racist. Statistics are supposed to be facts and facts are supposed to be objective. I'm having a hard time understanding how true numbers and facts, those that aren't intentionally man manipulated to fit a certain agenda, can hold any sort of bias towards a certain group of people. I mean, this is just absurd. It seems like everything and anything these days can be deemed as racist. Campus Reform has reported on multiple stories where people have called things racist for absurd reasons. Take, for example, a University of Rhode Island professor who claimed that science, statistics, and technology are all inherently racist. Multiple professors argue that the Georgia runoffs were racist, and a professor at Stanford argued that Dungeons and Dragons is racist as well. I mean, the list goes on and on. One search on Campus Reform's website, and you can find many more examples where that came from. The left has weaponized the term racist to signify anything that a person may not agree with. If someone doesn't agree with your opinion, that person is a racist. If a, if a system like Google isn't up to your standards, it is also racist. If you don't like someone or something, it or that person is racist as well. This is such a childish mentality to have and it does not guarantee any progress of any kind. And if we continue down this path, people will be able to justify calling something racist just for the sake of it. The term racist is actually losing its true meaning and value. These types of claims will only blur what the true definition of racism is. Moving on to our second top story of the week, a professor is calling the traditional grading system racist and he's proposing an alternative system for grading purposes. Here to tell us more about that story is campus reform correspondent Claire Alfrey. Thanks for having me on, Ophelia. Arizona State University professor Asao No wants colleges nationwide to follow his labor-based grading system, a form of ungrading where students are given a grade based on their, quote, amount of effort put towards the work, devaluing quality and accuracy in the grading. In his recent lecture at the University of Tennessee, Professor Anel claims that education is built on white supremacy, especially when it comes to using proper grammar and grading students using the traditional AB grading system. His new grading method positively, quote, changes everyone's relationship to dominant standards of English that come from elite, masculine, heteronormative, ableist, white radical groups of speakers. Now, this isn't the first time campus reform has called out Professor Renault for his grading philosophy. He's written books, essays, and spoken at conferences to explain how the traditional grading system is rooted in racism. Professor Ono also discredited using proper English and grammar in papers because students who use white vernacular on a daily basis are at an advantage. But through my personal experience with ungraving, this shift in academia will allow some students to get an A for low quality work and take away the incentive to work hard in college. Through my two college classes I've taken with the ungrading method, many of my classmates didn't take those classes seriously. They stopped showing up for class, turned in assignments late, and it made group work even more unequal. 
I saw students who put in 10 hours on an assignment get the same grade as students who barely put an hour in because they both tried their best. Professor Renault's grading method is take away the, an, an objective evaluation, accurate monitoring of process, and incentive to work hard in college. Low performing students won't take these classes seriously because they will be handed an A for cheating and for meeting the bare minimum. The bigger issue is Professor Noh's grading method that claims to make the classroom more equitable is actually putting hardworking, high achieving students at a disadvantage. It's not racist to expect students to turn in high quality work with proper grammar and students should not be rewarded for be doing the bare minimum. That's all for me. Back to you, Ophelia. Thanks, Claire. And for our top story of the week, the University of North Dakota is weighing a sweeping policy that would impose gender inclusion mandates on nearly every single facet of university life, including housing. The pending policy document, originated in June and last revised in September, notes that the university prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex, including gender identity and gender expression. Therefore, the policy serves as a supplement to the university's discrimination and harassment policy, as well as its Title IX and sexual violence policy. University of North Dakota Communications Director David Dodds told Campus Reform that the policy has completed its comment period and has been forwarded to the school's executive council for further discussion. The university would allow members to specify the pronouns and other gendered personal references used to refer to them. The university would then utilize these references except as legally or administratively required. For housing, students would therefore be allowed to stay in housing consistent with their gender identity and expression without a requirement that transgender students stay in single occupancy accommodations. So basically what this would mean is that if a man identified as a female, he could essentially be assigned a female roommate at the University of North Dakota if this proposal goes through. Campus reform asked the University of North Dakota whether female students would be able to opt out of rooming with a biological male student if that was the case. Dodds said that, quote, UND housing will continue to work with all students to find living arrangements that are best fit for each student, regardless of reason. The bottom line is this policy puts the safety of women second when it comes to advancing the woke leftist radical agenda that we've seen over the past couple of months. People are more concerned with being politically correct and inclusive than they are with protecting women's safety in some of the most private spaces on a college campus, including the bathroom and the dorm. Keep in mind, a 14-year-old girl was just raped in a Virginia school bathroom by a male who is wearing a skirt. Parents shouldn't have to be concerned for their daughter's safety when they send them to school in the morning, whether that's to an elementary, a high school, or to a university. It also makes me wonder, you know, where is the feminist outrage on this issue? They should be the first ones stepping up to protect women in the bathroom and in the dorms, yet they continue to, remi to remain silent as this issue becomes even more of a problem on college campuses and in broader society. And that's why it's so important for us to speak up against these policies because again, this is not about being politically correct or inclusive anymore. This is everything to do with safety. And while this may be a proposal at one college in North Dakota now, this could very easily spread to other college campuses across the country. And keep in mind, the Biden administration has already made its stance very clear on these gender inclusion policies. Parents and students who are paying thousands of dollars in tuition costs every single year should feel confident that university officials and administrators are putting the safety of their students first. Policies like this one do the exact opposite. No woman should have to fear for their safety when they enter a bathroom or their dorm. And for everyone's favorite part of the episode, our woke tweet of the week, one professor is taking to Twitter to express her concerns with fraternities. In fact, Professor Michelle Dauber wants to abolish them altogether, claiming that they, like Google and traditional grading systems, as we've learned in this episode, are racist. Dauber, a law and sociology professor, tweeted on October 23rd, quote, abolish fraternities. They are exclusionary, racist, rapey sewers of toxic masculinity that cannot be reformed. They don't deserve their own houses. Fraternities are separated based on gender, not race. So I'm having a hard time understanding that argument. And I also have another question. If we have to abolish fraternities, does that mean we also have to abolish sororities as well? And look, fraternities have existed for far longer than this professor has even been alive, since 1819 to be exact. And they share the same purpose as any other student organization on campus, which is to provide a place for people to gather that share the same beliefs and values. 
There's nothing offensive about that. Those are all the top stories we have for you this week. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to click that subscribe button and leave a like down below. You can also follow along with all of the college craziness on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Campus Reform. Next week, we'll be back with a Thanksgiving special of the Campus Countdown. But for now, I'm Ophelia Jacobson. Thanks for watching.